What's happening, folks? I'm back with another reaction, back with some more Duran Duran. And we're going back to their Arena album, live album from 1984, uh, which I now understand I have a version, even though this is a reissue from 99. It has the original 84 track list, which uh, apparently, um, originally I thought I had a, a later um, changed track list, uh, which included, I think, a couple other tracks, but this version is, I guess, the original track list. So uh, now with that cleared up, there are two tracks I have yet to get to. Uh, and we're going to listen to Union of the Snake. Now, I just have been reacting uh, to Seven and the Ragged Tiger, and I actually got to the point where the studio version of that song, um, I skipped over it, uh, because, again, I already reacted to a vinyl version I have, and I didn't know, because that version is just listed as using Union of the Snake. So I wasn't sure if it was fundamentally different, even though I have some memory of um, a couple people saying that they did think it was a remix. Um, so it's funny, like, I basically skipped over that tune, but then I was like, oh, I want to go back to Arena, and, you know, You Need a Snake is just the tune that we're going to do. So, apparently this is just the tune that had to happen tonight, um, one way or the other. So, um, yeah, I mentioned it at the time, um, I couldn't make much of the lyrics. It was one of the first reactions I did, I think maybe the first reaction I did to Duran Duran, where I had no sense of the lyrics going into it. And I think it was the first time where someone commented below uh, the video and they were like, hey, you know, Simon Le Bon is sort of notorious for writing lyrics that, you know, it's not easy to see exactly every little detail of what he's saying. They tend to be a bit cryptic, a bit ambiguous, enough that like, you know, you could maybe run a couple different ways with it. And now, a couple months later, I have a much greater understanding of the way in which that is true and the way in sort of the certain types of metaphors and sort of idioms that he's particularly effective at conveying ideas or emotions through. Uh, but yeah, I do remember this is the first tune where some people were like, yeah, you know, I'm not entirely sure what it's about. Um, it's, you know, one of those songs that um, is sort of notoriously cryptic. Uh, someone did mention, though, that he had written... It was like a couple of years before this tune came out that he had already sort of sketched it out or maybe he had already written the entire tune because I guess there was some like something in his notebook or something a couple years earlier and it said Union of the Snake. So clearly this is a concept that had been stewing in his mind for a while. So um, again, I don't remember um, if I was able to come to uh, a better understanding of the lyrics and since I listened to that tune I've you know begun exploring other albums and so on. So I'll admit, uh, it's not one that I've gone back to more than a couple more times, so um, at this point still, I'm not entirely sure um, what uh, the union of the snake is, but you know, a snake is a singular bodied individual, or like a creature, meaning it doesn't have appendages or limbs in the way that a lot of other species um, in the macroscopic world uh, do. Um, so in that sense, it is a more unified um, bodily uh, being than others, so to use the snake as a metaphor is a way to suggest that like whatever it is should never be sort of like in different sections, right? It, it should always work um, as a singular unit because that's the way that it was sort of designed. Um, but again, you know, maybe I'm being influenced from, from that, from, you know, study of American history and so on. Obviously, um, the fledgling the United States, there was a lot of representations of the different um, ultimately, like colonies that had then turned into like their own states in the sense that we now use the term nation state, but it was the idea that, well, we're all going to come together and be this union of states. Um, so, yeah, maybe that kind of, you know, my historical studies as a historian are, um, you know, coloring that understanding of snake as representative of a entity that is comprised of like different sections but is all one being. So, not sure, but do let me know if there's a sort of insight or an interpretation that you think is. Um, that can help me sort of understand. Either way, let's get to it. This is the live version of Union of the Snake on the Arena album by Duran Duran, 1984. Yeah.
better than I remember. Maybe it's a, it's a crime that I've only listened to it a couple times since. Guitar's in a nice groove there. And if we push that, the could in that line, it's just a little touch, but I love it. The voices in your body coming through on the radio. I missed the first part of that the first time around. Or like a uh, guest singer. Like playing, what do they call it? Like harmonic style? I don't know, but maybe that was Rhodes on the keys? I'm not sure. does that part, it's like this sunrise that like, it's like warm and golden, but it's almost so bright you kind of like have to avert your eyes. Oh. That sort of stagnated rhythm for a second there, that was great. There's a lot of stuff going on there, like right to the end, just little flourishes, little touches. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed that more than I remember enjoying the, the vinyl version I reacted to, though part of that might just be like, you know, I have a newfound understanding of their abilities and their range as musicians and um, song composers. So, yeah, maybe it's just, um, you know, that I'm returning now with a bit more knowledge in tow, a bit more experience. Uh, with their catalog, but either way, that was cool. It was more enjoyable than the first time. Again, I'm still sort of, you know, searching for um, some of the thematic uh, underpinnings here. Um, but like I said, there's some interesting lines there where it's something about like something about a person's body and the way like it's being told to them from the radio, and then uh, I forget that there, there's obviously lines in the chorus about a snake. Um, but yeah, I'm still not sure like exactly how that metaphor is functioning. So. Um, again, I, like I said, when I mentioned this after reacting to it the first time, um, I think people were like, you know, this is a good example of the way in which his lyrics are a bit, like, opaque. You can't always get, like, a clear, you know, point-by-point, point, um, like, narrative understanding of them. Sometimes it's, like, thematic or it's, like, you know, a picture is being sketched. So, um, yeah, let me know if that's sort of just the way that a lot of people see this one or if, you know, there are um, some particular angles that maybe um, I'm not catching yet. Do let me know. Uh, but yeah, so there's one tune left I haven't reacted to, in my understanding, it's the very first uh, Duran Duran single. We're talking Planet Earth, so uh, one more tune to go on the Arena album. Uh, very happy I got this. 
By the way, uh, I did in fact order a diamond in the mine, so it hasn't arrived yet. Uh, did I say uh, mine? I hope I said mined, which is what it really is, not mine. Um, but yeah, ultimately I have another live uh, Duran album coming, and not only does it have like, I don't know, seven or eight songs from All You Need Is Now, um, it also has three or four uh, like tunes that are like classic tunes of theirs, including Ordinary World, very excited to listen to that. Um, I'm trying to remember what uh, two or three of the others are, but they're all like tunes, it's like, oh wow, like I can't wait to hear that. I think uh, Hungry Like the Wolf is on there. Um, but yeah, bottom line, it has tunes from that album, All You Need Is Now, as well as some of the classics. So, very excited. Uh, when I get that, we're just going to go through it, so hopefully you're here for it, and let me know if you are. Um, other than that, thank you for listening and watching. I will see you next time.